one of the most respected and beloved actors on the stage and screen and television, also an accomplished writer, producer, and director. He's the first African-American to win the Academy Award for Best Supporting Actor for his unforgettable performance as Drill Sergeant Emil Foley in An Officer and a Gentleman. Among his others, uh, he's been the outstanding lead actor for his portrayal of Fiddler in the groundbreaking, you remember Roots? Fiddler in, in Roots and uh, nominated for the Golden Globe Award Best Performance by an actor in supporting role, the Josephine Baker story. Oh, here he is, Louis Gossett Jr., humanitarian, activist, actor, an actor and a gentleman. We're so honored. This is a legend. This is a legend. Wow. 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 Get down. Give me 50. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Wow. What, what a pleasure. What an honor. Now, you showed me a picture in the back of your grandmother who was at your debut. My great grandma. Your great, uh, your great. Uh, tell us how old she was at well, that time. My first time, uh, my debut was in 1953. Uh, on Broadway, that's the age of 17. And my great-grandmother, I was a 17, and my great-grandmother came to see the play a couple of weeks later. And the picture of me and her, she was approximately 115. <laughs> <laughs> she was a slave here in Georgia. Wow. And uh, so uh, the Bible didn't get started until the slaves were freed. She remembers the Bible being started. The births, baptisms, uh, marriages, were all in the Bible and hers was not recorded. But she only lied to me one time. She said, this is gonna hurt me more than it's gonna hurt you. <laughs> <laughs> I, you see, that's the same language. It didn't matter who said it, right? <laughs> now, in that first play that you started in, I, th I think you might have had a little curse word in there. What did your grandmother do? Well, see, I, I didn't know she was gonna make it, but uh, I have a line in the play. Damn it, Grandma, I'm not gonna do that. So then, if like, okay, so fade out, fade in. She's backstage, and it's oh, Grandma, you made it. Oh, I'm so glad. She, I went to get a hug, and she slapped me. <laughs> <laughs> That's why you slapped me. She slapped me again. <laughs> she says, "I taught you better how to deal with your grandma, and you didn't behave yourself." I said, "No, that's a line in the play," and she snapped me again. <laughs> And then she said, I'm going to come back and make sure you don't say it again. <laughs> that's the lady. That's the lady. That's my spirit guide. She's still here today. Wow. Wow. She's still here today. Yes. Wow. Wow. Now, you wrote a best-selling autobi autobiography, um, An Actor and a Gentleman. Yes, sir. And it chronicles some of the challenges and triumphs of your 50-plus year career. And um, tell us a little bit about that. Well, um, it, 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 there comes a time in people's lives when you have to just, it's called spring cleaning, I guess you want to call it. You got to get some stuff out yeah, yeah. and make use to some other things to come yeah. in. You live on your laurels sometimes. Yeah. You go to sleep with them, you wake up, you got the same laurels, you know. Yep. Eventually that piles up. Yeah. And you go for the okie doke mm. and begin saying, there got to be something better. Yeah. I do this every day and it's got, I've got all the trappings and all this stuff. And people say how great you are every day and it's got to be something else. Yeah. And what it is is to, as I learned here lately in my elder years, mm -hmm. is to empty out some of the stuff and to be a receptive, a spiritual receptive of God's word. Wow, yes. So the yes. daily uh, practice is to get rid of all my personal Prejudices, even though I may be justified to keep them. Yes. Um, yes. All the low self esteem even though I think I should have them. Mm. And clear that passage. It's like God shining a light through you. Yes. And he can't shine a light through you if you have all these angers, these jealousies, and the light is diffuse. Yes, yes. So on a daily basis, I have to work on a daily basis to forgive. Yes. Even though I don't want to forgive. Mm. Mm. To uh, yeah. wow. 
understand rather yes. than be understood. Yes. To comfort rather than be comforted. To empty out that vessel mm. that we are. Get out of the driver's seat. Yes. And even in times when I want to wriggle, mm. have the faith that God has me in the palm of his hand. Yes. 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 Wow. And that's today. Yes. I, I love it. You know, most people don't realize that when you even are a person of prayer, prayer prompts action. Oh, it's amazing how to communicate that way. You know, because we have a uh, you know you know God invented he, he what, what was his name Lucifer. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> he put him out, and he knew what he was doing. Yeah, he had a twinkle in his eye. Go on out there. Yeah, it's the most beautiful, attractive angel you ever see. Yes, and today Lucifer is uh, opioids. Yes, money. Wow. Yes, cars, women, drugs, parties, all of that's Lucifer. Yeah. Yep. And Lucifer is put there for that particular purpose, I believe. Yeah. So now the reconnection of our generation, which I think I'm doing today here in Georgia, just like my great grandmama. Yes. I'm doing the job of an elder for yes. what it's worth. Yes. Yes. I love it. Yes. <clears throat> yeah, you, you, you've got an organization called, uh, is it E-Racism? E-Racism. E-Racism. That- now, E-Racism, I was raised in, in Brooklyn, New York, post-Depression. And in that post-depression society, yep. nobody had any money. Huh. So we all kind of had to rely on one another. So if I get home at dinner time, hmm. uh, there were so many different nationalities on that neighborhood, I could smell my way around the world. Hmm. <laughs> I could smell some fried chicken over here, some kefilte fish, some corned beef and cabbage, some lasagna. Yeah. Wow. And I was in their table if my parents didn't get home in time, and they were at mine. Wow. So that was my foundation. I wasn't coming from a black neighborhood. Yeah, wow. So those seeds were planted. Hmm. And, and it was those people who put me on the map wow. as I grew up. Wow. Those are the Arthur Millers and yeah. David Susskinds and yeah. the Carol Kings and yes. the Jackie Robinsons and the yeah. Ralph Bunch. Yeah, wow. All those people. Wow. We were to put together and we created a, a renaissance of people. Yes. Oh, wow. They weren't playing that in California. Mm. They weren't playing that in other states, but yeah. my seeds were planted. I had to know how. Seriously, my seeds were deeply planted. Wow, wow. So now today, f- fade out, fade in, that's the only way we can make it today. Yes, yes. There's no yes. black, there's no white. I'm not an uh, African-American anymore. I'm an American African. Oh, uh, wow, yeah. <laughs> I love it, I love it. So wow. I, try, I try and behave that same and be an example, suggest, gently suggest to the next generation. Yes what they might be wanting to con- concentrate on. Yes. And uh, once I see that happens, yeah. I once was blind and now I see. I once was sick and now I feel well. As yes. soon as I do that exercise, spiritually, emotionally, and physically, yes. it comes back together. Yeah, absolutely. Who could figure something like that? Right, yes. Except this blind faith. Yes. It's yes. faith, 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 faith. Yes. Well, see, your voice has a certain gravitas to it because... You've grown up through things that this younger generation has not had to live through. I know. I think um, God puts us in very, he's, he moves in very mysterious ways. Sometimes yes. he's, got to, he's got a smile like you have sometimes. You've got that half smile on your face. <laughs> 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 so he, he, he taught you how to do that. Just, there's a deeper picture than we think we, we think we got it, you know. Yeah. But there's so much, so much, uh, so much of a deeper story. So yes. Yes, it is. Such a deeper story. And, uh, yes. So these young people who think they got it with their five cars and their women and their drugs and their houses and their money, um, they find that the, the, the dynamic of getting that is, uh, it satisfies you less and less and less. Mm. And all of a sudden, it goes out the window and you say, what's next? Yeah. And of course, the next thing is surrender. Mm. Um, I've learned the lessons many times at, mm. at 82, the lesson of surrender. Wow. Lucifer is strong within me. Mm. The only thing stronger than me and Lucifer is the man I choose to call God. Yes, 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 yes. Wow. In 1961, you did your debut film, yes, A Raisin in the Sun, with Sidney Poitier. Yes, sir. Tell us what was it like to work with Sidney Poitier. My goodness. Oh, that's wow. my hero. <laughs> Sidney is my hero. See, he was a, technically the first black man to win an Oscar, but Sidney was really Bahamian. Hmm. From the Bahamas. That's right. the other side of my family was the Bahamas. I'm not just a cousin of Sydney's. But the first African American to win an, an Oscar, African American man 
to win an Oscar was myself. And Sidney was kind of behaving with his, with his, his, his patois, you know. Yeah. But he was so magnetic that I had to work hard not to copy him. Mm. Wow. Mm. Wow. Very difficult to copy. He wow. had a slightly pitched dough, hip first walk. And if you get on the way, you know you're going to go down. <laughs> He's one of my best friends today, him and Harry. They're my mentors, if you want to call it that. Wow. They, uh, that man was fantastic. Yeah. Still yeah. is. Still yes. is fantastic. Oh, wow. Yeah. I, I absolutely love it. At, at, at what point did you realize that you, were going, that you wanted to be an actor? How, how did you know that that was, that was a part of your, your, your path? Well, it was a gift. I didn't know how powerful the gift was until... I wanted to be a doctor, and mm. I wanted to play professional basketball. Wow. So um, I was drafted to the New York Knickerbockers in 1959. Wow. I also got a part in A Raisin in the Sun in 1959. Wow. So I went up to the Catskills, uh, Catskills, Gross Singers, and I probably would have made it, but I, had a lot of, I would have a lot of splinters, splinters on my butt. <laughs> <laughs> but those boys, if they had not made it, they, they had terrible choices. Mm. So the choices, they were fist fights. Mm. And, and I would have more, when I got to Raising Dennis Sun, I realized I had more money in my pocket than they had in the bank. Wow, wow. But different today. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They were kind of quite wealthy today, but uh, I think I made, maybe I made the right decision. Yeah, I think you did. I think you <laughs> <laughs> Wow. You, you got your own star in, in Hollywood on the walk. Yeah. Mm -hmm. what, that was 92? 92. My, my grandchildren went there taking a picture around the star. That's oh, why I'm here. My grandchildren. Oh, wow. Oh, wow. Yeah, yeah. Oh, wow. We just came back from them. It's natural. It's natural to reconnect the generations. It's the key to our kingdom. And uh, if we can combine the reconnection of our generations, our number one action is the salvation of the planet and mankind. Yeah, yeah. That's all there is. There's no black, there's no white anymore. Yeah, yeah. There's no Jew, there's no Italian. There's nothing but mankind now. Yeah. <clears throat> And yeah. if we don't do any, and the main job is to take care of this planet and one another. If we're doing anything else, we may as well be in a 747 airplane. <laughs> and that plane is about to crash. Yeah. And people decide to fighting over who's going to be in first class. Yeah, yeah, right. Wow, wow. Yeah, right. <laughs> right. What's going on? Right, right. The plane's going to crash. Yeah, wow. Yes, sir. You know, over the years, through the challenges of life, you go through different things. Everybody at some point in their journey, is tempted to quit over circumstances. It could be relationships, it could be money, it could be a health issue, it, it, it could be trouble with the law. How did you overcome the temptation to quit during difficult times in your life? Oh boy, there's so many different incidences. Hmm. The first incident where I'm coming from that Coney Island multi-ethnic level and all the people I grew up with running show business on Broadway they sent me on a first class to a TWA plane to California, and the limousine came out. Those are my people I went to school with, and they took me to the Beverly Hills Hotel and uh, put me in a presidential suite, and they said I had a rental car down in Sunset Boulevard, 15 minutes away. It was a Ford Fairlane Galaxy 500 with a hard top. <laughs> Red interior, and I put Sam Cook on. And it took 20 minutes to get from rental car to the Beverly Hills Hotel. Took me four and a half hours. I met every policeman in the state. I had never had that experience in my life, even when I came down here. And they did, they went on, it was relentless. And by that time I got to the hotel five hours later, uh, told the, the, the manager and he said, well, that's the way it is out here. You want to feel better, take this and see the movie stars homes and go take pictures of the movie stars home. So I went up to take pictures of the movie stars homes and the cops came and handcuffed me to a tree for three more hours. Talking about wanting to give up. So I told my father, he's in Coney Island, he said, I'll be right there. Yeah, you're going to be right there. <laughs> <laughs> and then I called my agent, the man I grew up with, and he said, what are you going to do? And I said, I think I'm going to go to work. Mm. That's the first one. Wow. There's been many since then. My goodness. Wow. <laughs> My. Oh, wow. I love it. Wow. Tell us the role that God has played in your life along this journey. Oh, boy. He's always been in my life, obviously. Yeah. Uh, it's up to us to know when he is and when he is not. He always is. Yes. Um, I've learned these lessons. So I, I learned to, I think, uh, 
recognize some of his signs these days, both in the world and in my personal life. Hmm. It, it colors my thoughts and my choices. Yeah. So when you ask giving up, there is no such thing. Yeah, wow. There is nothing that maybe it's a challenge, maybe it's a shifting, but yes. I'm not in the driver's seat anymore. Yeah, wow. Um, wow. Hmm. So I've had some contemporaries who are gone. I miss them terribly. Um, the decisions of being with the program yeah. uh, is just my emptying out the blockage of the light and sitting in the palm of God's hand. Yes, wow. And because mm. um, I've had pretty tough two or three weeks making this major decision. Yes. Uh, if I do, I have time to tell you one last story, sir. Sure. I lived in Malibu, California for almost 30 years. Raised my two kids there. One was adopted, and the other was. It's the, my natural son, both of my sons. All my grandchildren had an indoor swimming pool, and we had a ball. I had a 1986 Rolls Royce Corniche II. Hmm. I'm not supposed to have a 1986 Corniche Rolls Royce, no, Corniche II. I had one, hmm. and I drove it everywhere, supermarkets, and I didn't know that there was an element that didn't like that. I'd smile, you know, do that thing. And then um, I knew that there was some reticence about me being in that neighborhood, but uh, I've managed to charm most people. A lot of people didn't like it. To make a long story short, I came home from one movie and there was a notice on my front door that my house was gonna go up for auction in 48 hours. I have money, I'm paying my bills. So I figured out in time, I paid it, got rid of an auction, and I decided to sit, you know, like, like that's a freedom fighter. They're not gonna take my house, you know, I'm gonna sit here. But the house really was giving me signals that you need to move because this is mold and it's getting old. No, I don't care. I'm going to sit here. I'm going to sit down. So finally, I said, okay, I think maybe I better move. And I got all my belongings and sent it out. And uh, I got more money than I expected. All my belongings and loved things are out of the house. And I reluctantly came to Atlanta to, to do a movie. And 10 days later, my house burnt down. If that has not, but under normal circumstances, I would have been in that house with my son and my grandson. The three of us would be dead. My, my, my. That's wow. less than three weeks ago. My, wow. Wow. So I have no choice on a daily basis to know who is running my life. Yes. Wow. 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 <laughs> That's real. That's real. Wow. No doubt. Some of these folks here might have, there are a couple of mics in the, in the uh, aisles here. If you guys have a question that you want to give him, come here to the microphone. Uh, while they're, they're coming to the mic, um, <clears throat> tell us what's been the best part of your life that you just deeply cherish. I deeply cherish the birth of my grandson, my latest grandson. Yeah. Who sat on my lap. Hmm. And uh, there's, there's pictures around, you'll see them. He sat on my lap and looked right at me. He could have said I had bad breath, but I don't think that was the case. <laughs> we connected and we're still connected today. Wow. So maybe one day you'll meet him. Wow. He's seven now. Oh, fantastic. Ball head to bed. <laughs> one to one. <laughs> yes, sir. Okay, Brooklyn in the house. First, I just want to thank um, Bishop Bronner and his wife um, for just having a place of excellence that I can come to every week. I thoroughly enjoy this church. I've enjoyed it every minute that I've been here. And don't get the opportunity to tell you how great you are and how great this church is. Uh, but I have a question. When you were working um, with Gene Frankel. Oh, wow. In the Blacks. Mm. And you were actually in that show with um, uh, James Earl Jones. And, and Roscoe and Lee Brown. Roscoe Lee Brown. And, and Cicely Cambridge, Tyson. And, Tyson and, and Maya Lincoln. Angelou. What in the world was that like? It with all of special. those personalities. We, we didn't know, we didn't know, yeah, but we were very involved. It was wow. a whole family, sometimes positive, sometimes negative, but a family going toward the, in the same direction. Wow. You know, but uh, it was incredible. The understudies, Billy D. Williams. Right. You know, it's the understudies. So we had a, quite, a, quite a family. Yeah, quite a family. And the, and the dynamic actually working with those people day to day because the, the material was very controversial. Incredible. And Incredible. so I can imagine all of those personalities talking about all of those different things and they had that different, dynamic. Uh, different ideas about racism. Right. And some of them were highly committed and very angry and others were kind of cool. <laughs> but they had to kind of sublimate all of that in order to serve the play. 
Right. And the play, it's not a bad idea to do it again now. Right. Maybe sometimes, we'll see. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> wow, wow. <laughs> we got another one here coming. Um, while, while they're uh, coming, if we, we've got some other people that are, that are working in the entertainment industry, aspiring actors. And is there any word of advice that you'd have for somebody who's, who's in that, who's pursuing that, that field now? As I said, it's, it's for, for all you aspiring actors and actresses and all your children, the number one phrase is there is no such thing as impossible. Wow. 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 <laughs> Love it. Good evening. Good evening. Uh, Bishop just asked a question to Ezekiel, and he asked um, for us to ask our young children what problem would they like to solve you know, for their future. I would like to ask you, being that you've um, maybe fulfilled your purpose in life, what problem would you like to leave as a legacy for our children maybe to solve, if I'm asking that correctly? Well, the, 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 hum, the, the humblest we can be, there really is no graduation in this life. Absolutely. That's a, it's, it's, it's every, it's all you got is the one day you have, sun up, sun down, do the best you can on that one day. Absolutely. Thank you. Know. you. Yes, on a daily basis, and he's pouring, he's pouring into his grandchildren too. You know, yeah, yeah. The, the the wisdom, the experience that he's had over life. Because remember, a good man leaves an inheritance to his children's yeah. children. So he's passionate. This man loves his grandchildren. But it's in your DNA. That's yeah. what we used to do. Yeah. Even though you don't realize it, in your DNA is how we used to take better care of one another. Yes. We need to do it again. Yes. Yes, sir. God bless you all for um, being here. And you. Um, you mentioned the number one thing is being um, to save the world. And I, I wonder, um, in addition to the um, e-racism organization that you created, um, what your plans are for that? Because my perspective is on saving the world and on helping the homeless, I um, have a lot of consideration about where the world is today with artificial intelligence, the long-term plan across many hundreds of years of subjugation, control, racism, and um, the education system that controls us and directs us into um, subjugation where they basically have a term they call dumbing us down. And the way that that brings home all of those things right now is that um, I've tried to su surrender myself to the will of God. And I'm interested in helping people. And in that surrender, and what I thought was um, um, truth with God and myself, um, I find myself homeless right now. And I have a wife and a three-year-old baby boy. And people kept robbing my equipment for my business. I've been self-employed for 20 plus years and I'm an accountant. And so I, I miss my January rent, I miss my December rent. And so, you know, the process just runs over you if you don't have a community, you don't have friends and family that says, okay, here's the solution. And so, thank you. Thank you. <laughs> Tell them a little about your organization, Eracism, and, and what you do in, in terms of, of helping this younger generation to get rid of, of feelings of prejudices and. I, I, I feel you, young man. I feel your, your situation. It's, it's a deeper situation than that. Uh, it's a tough one. I don't know, because it's, it's, it's a, it's a, dynamic, a dynamic I have to have with the young people. And the dynamic, I was sent fortunately around the world at the age of 19. I went to Kenya and Nigeria and been to South Africa. And the thing that I remember in history, in the civilizations, is that what I noticed the key to the, to, to the oldest civilization on the planet, 
that gave birth to the, to, to the families was at the foot of Mount Kilimanjaro. And what was the thing that kept them so alive? Was that everything that they did on every age of every of the other tribe was for the benefit of the whole tribe. That's and so that's good. why they lasted so long. Yes. So now when you do that for the benefit of the whole tribe and civilizations like uh, the Ethiopian civilization, the Nigerian civilization, we kind of ran the planet a little bit. Mm. And so some of the pluses and the minuses, we left our, our legacy and yeah. our, our class. We also, we also had slaves. Right. We had, uh, we had uh, Nubian slaves. We yeah. had all kinds of slaves we made. We had eunuchs. So perhaps if you want to close your eyes, maybe we have to pay a karmic due for having done that. My, my, my. Now here we are now having paid the dues, those of us who are still alive, hmm. to go back to the basics. Hmm. Whatever we do is for the benefit of the whole tribe. Wow, wow, that's so good. Wow. That's, that's so good. everybody. Yeah. Regardless of our situation. And if everybody practices that, then that young man would not be hungry. Right, 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 right. And he would be worried about his family. Yeah. Uh, we would, everybody would be taken care of the way they did on the first civilization. Today. Yes, yes. So somebody didn't want that to happen. Now it's full circle. It's got to happen to everybody. Yes. Wow, wow. wow By so general good. suggestion. Yes, so good. That's so good. All right, right here. Uh, good evening, Bishop and uh, Lou. Yes. Bishop, thank you for allowing us to, uh, this opportunity to be able to ask questions. Thank you for True Talk. Uh, my question is, what is it that you would have in mind to solve a problem with the youth, our black youth especially, today, as the young man said, his business went under because of the theft. We have, and it pierced my heart to hear the news, but we have young men that are just going rapid now with the stealing and the deceit in our own communities where we don't feel safe at all. What suggestion or ideals that you may have that we can deter some of the young men from the crime that they're committing today, especially here in Atlanta. <laughs> well, you know, I think that he's just addressed it when he's talking about the whole tribe. Yeah. The, the sickness is in the family. The family is the antidote to the sickness in the society. It is the most base unit of any society is the family. And I love it in other cultures because their family was not defined just by mother, father, and kids. It was the grandparents. It was great grandparents, nieces, nephews. You took care of your family. Your family was your tribe, was your tribe. I mean, he, tell them how many children your grandmother had, your great grandmother. Well, great grandma, she, she, she had quite a few of them. <laughs> <laughs> she often had a very old male snuff. You, 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 you told me <laughs> But if you can imagine a baby in a high chair in a kitchen with the foods on a tray and mama's on the phone too long, where's the food going? That's our teenagers today. Their lessons have stopped and I can't blame them if they were not taught. All right, so when I get home, there was no cell phones when I got home, but there was those elderly women in the window. <laughs> I'm going to tell your mama we need to reconnect yes, 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 yes. all children belong to all of us yeah, yeah, yeah. can't get away with nothing right right here good afternoon and thank you for this platform yes ma'am the movie in the movie Roots I loved you uh, Fiddler yes ma'am your thank passion you. and I was wondering if you, how far back did your DNA go did it go as far as the thoughts of how we got here and, well, yeah, and to, what our to... ancestors went through, because you were phenomenal. Oh, and... I was angry. <laughs> <laughs> I said, wait a minute, James Earl Jones is playing the daddy? They didn't even got a better part than O.J. Simpson had a better part than me. <laughs> But I had to really look like we look at all the characters to get inside the fiddler. And then I realized there really is no such thing as an Uncle Tom. Yeah. He survived. If it wasn't for, for Fiddler, there would be none of us. Wow. So it's, uh, wow. it became an important character. Yeah, that's very 
Very, very important. So, yeah. Very true. Right here. <laughs> well, I'm so glad to meet you. Yes. And this is not a question, but I guess uh, a reflection. My husband, he's probably glad he's not sitting with me tonight because he would be embarrassed. But <laughs> in past, he's back there somewhere. In past years of our marriage, Bishop says sometimes you get older, your hair will turn gray or go away. Well, when my husband's hair was starting to go away, <laughs> my encouragement to him was always, but you look more like Lou Gossett. <laughs> <laughs> And, and, and you were one of my favorite people. That was the man they tried to hold down when I came in this door, right? <laughs> <laughs> no, no, no. You were one of my favorite people. Thank you, so that was always my statement as he would see more and more hair going away. You're looking more and more like Lou Gossett, and you know how I feel about Lou Gossett. So I'm glad that I have a chance to really see you, and he can see you. So now he knows that I love him, even love, though the hair went away. Don't worry, brother, it's okay. <laughs> yes, good evening and thank you. Um, I know you were born and reared in Brooklyn. Yes, sir. But to what degree do you feel or do you feel that you're Southern? I, I know your great grandmother had a tremendous influence. Yes, uh, well, every summer. I was down here growing the watermelon. My specialty was yellow meat watermelon. Wow. So I wow. knew how to, how to grow yellow meat watermelon. And me and my cousins, we'd, uh, we'd come back after summer pretty strong. We'd be the captain of the baseball and basketball team because we ate all that food, right? So we had, we had we were watermelon experts. And it was so popular that the trucks would back up and put it on the silver streak of the silver media train and went up the Eastern Seaboard. I'd find our watermelon in the best restaurants on the Eastern Seaboard. We'd take a thumbprint and identify ourselves. And I saw my thumbprint, my cousin's, cousin's thumbprint at a restaurant right in Broadway. Oh, wow. That's wow. how good, that's good he was. Wow. Growing watermelon. Wow. Yeah. Yellow meat watermelon is good stuff, too. Oh, it's, it's a short table spread, but it's sweet. Oh, yeah. It's really nice. Oh, wow. Last question right here. Good evening, Bishop and Dr. Moon. Uh, Lewis, this question's for you. Yes, ma'am. I love when you play the roots. Actually, I loved all your movies. Thank you. But what was it like working with Richard Gere and, uh, and Deborah Winger and Officer and the Gentleman? Oh, boy. Well, the, the, the story was that my agent, uh, somebody else had gotten the part. I don't know what he said on the, point, on the, on the, on the, uh, the phone, but I said, he's going to come see you. So I you know, went down to see him. And soon I had argued because 90% of the DIs and the Marines were black. So I knocked on the door and opened it and, and Taylor Hackman said, you got the part. I don't know why, but then I, had, then I had my work cut out for me and I went to uh, MCRD, which is Marine Corps Recruitment Division at Fort Camp Pendleton for six weeks. And I did everything but smoke the camels and drink the beer. <laughs> and when I came back to that place, I was a Marine. They thought I did the Iron Man course. I did everything that they wanted me to do. And I was a Marine. So it originally was going to be a Hollywood kind of movie, a throwaway. Yeah, yeah. Not with the Marines. You don't throw nothing away with the Marines. Wow. Yeah. They're, my, they're my boy. You got a Marine here in the church. When I saw him on the elevator. He's, a, he's going to be a Marine for his rest of his life. You know, there you go. <laughs> I like the role you played in the Jeffersons when you was pursuing Isabel Sanford Weezy. No such person. <laughs> okay, as the lady said, you are phenomenal. And, you know, we all really appreciate and love you. And, Bishop, thank you for this opportunity. Thank you, man. Wow. Thank you. Ladies and gentlemen, Louis Gossett, Jr., we are so appreciative of your being here with us tonight. My, 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 wow, wow, wow.